True Quranic insight we gain wisdom's light. True Quranic insight we gain wisdom's light. Illuminating our path to what is right. Illuminating our path to what is right. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'audhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Noor Allah Once again, welcome to the program Quranic Insights In the previous episode, we discussed the topic of the prohibition of usury from Surah Ali Imran We covered the definition of usury its prohibition according to the Holy Qur'an and Hadith, the condemnation of usurers, the curse associated with usury, its worldly disadvantages, and the ways to avoid it. Today, insha'Allah, we will explore another topic from Surah Ali Imran, well-wishing for people. We'll begin by understanding what well-wishing truly means, followed by a discussion on its virtues. We will also be discussing the deep commitment to well-wishing shown by our pious predecessors, the acts of well-wishing encouraged by Islam, and the different forms it can take. Let's begin our episode with Durood. The Holy Prophet wasallam said, When Thursday comes, Allah Almighty sends angels with silver scrolls and gold pens. They record the names of those who recite durood upon me in abundance on Thursday and the night preceding Friday. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Dear viewers, well-wishing for one another is a vital aspect of Islamic teachings. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah Almighty instructs us to call people to righteousness and prevent them from evil, proclaiming in verse 104, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Translation from Kanzul Irfan, and there should be a group from among you who calls towards righteousness and command good and forbid evil. Well wishing means guiding others towards goodness in both worldly and eternal matters, alleviating their problems and suffering, assisting them in righteous deeds, concealing their flaws and desiring for them what we desire for ourselves. But in today's world, this practice is gradually disappearing. Selfishness has reached an alarming level and instead of helping one another, people often cause harm. It's become common to spy on others, interfere in their affairs, speak ill of them, feel jealous and even wish for their misfortune. This negative behavior isn't limited to society at large, it's found within families as well. Many household conflicts stem from people focusing on their own rights while neglecting the rights of others. To address this widespread issue, it's crucial to reform our communities and recognize that helping one another rather than being selfish is the path to true betterment. Dear viewers, if well-wishing spreads throughout society, not only can it help resolve family conflicts, but it can also play a significant role in eradicating societal evils. The teachings of the Holy Quran and the blessed Hadith are clear on this matter. Allah Almighty has commanded us to fulfill the rights of others. Hence, in part 4, Surah Nisa, verse number 36, Allah Almighty proclaims, 
وعبد الله ولا تشرك به شيئا وبالوالدين احسانا وبذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين والجار ذي القربى والجار الجنب والصاحب بالجنب وابن السبيل وما ملكت ايمانكم translation from kanzu al irfan worship allah and associate none with him be good to your parents, your relatives, orphans, the destitute, near and distant neighbors, the companion by your side, the traveler and those bond servants whom you rightfully possess. In Islam, well-wishing and fulfilling the rights of others are so important that zakah has been made obligatory. The primary purpose of this pillar is to support the poor in society. Beyond the obligatory zakah, Allah Almighty also encourages us to give voluntary charity in His way and commands us to fulfill the rights of all those in need. Allah Almighty proclaims in verse 215 of Surah Al-Baqarah, يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ Translation from Kanzu al-Irfan, they question you about what they should spend. Say, the wealth that you spend of good, so that is for your parents, and close relations, and orphans, and the destitute, and the traveler. Dear viewers, Helping the needy, the poor, and orphans, fulfilling their needs and bringing them comfort are fundamental teachings of Islam. Islam emphasizes that assisting others, supporting them, and providing for their daily necessities are not only acts of kindness, but also a means to earn the pleasure of Allah Almighty. As proclaimed in verse 177 of Surah Al-Baqarah, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِكِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَالسَّائِلِينَ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ Translation from Kanzul Irfan Piety is not in turning your faces to the east or the west. Rather, true piety is in those who believe in Allah, the day of judgment, the angels, the book, and the prophets, who spend wealth for the love of Allah on relatives, orphans, the destitute, travelers, beggars, and on freeing slaves who establish the prayer give zakat. People who use their wealth to alleviate poverty and do good for others are considered by Allah Almighty to be making a valuable investment. Allah Almighty guarantees that such spending will be rewarded manifold. Helping others and meeting their needs is highly esteemed in the court of Allah Almighty. Islam is fundamentally a religion centered on kindness and compassion. Well wishing and aiding others provide true happiness, inner satisfaction, and the pleasure of Allah Almighty. Furthermore, as long as you assist your fellow Muslims, Allah Almighty will continue to support you. The Holy Prophet said, The person who alleviates a worldly problem of a Muslim, Allah Almighty will ease his suffering on Judgment Day. The person who hides a Muslim's flaws, Allah Almighty will conceal his flaws in the world and the hereafter. Allah Almighty helps a person as long as he helps his brother. Dear viewers, we should strive to help and support our fellow Muslims as this will place us among the righteous and lead to numerous good deeds being recorded in our favor. According to a blessed hadith, fulfilling the needs of a fellow Muslim is like worshipping Allah Almighty throughout one's life. In Islam, well-wishing for others is so valued that Sharia regards those who benefit others as the best among us. 
Hence, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah narrated that a person arrived in the court of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam and asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who is the most beloved to Allah Almighty? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam replied, the most beloved to Allah Almighty is the one who benefits others the most. Subhanallah. Allah Almighty praises those who benefit others and do good deeds. For example, in Surah Al-Hashr, Allah Almighty commends the Ansar, the holy companions of Medina. When the holy companions from Mecca migrated to Medina, they left their homes and wealth for the love of Allah Almighty and His Prophet ﷺ. At that time, the Ansar, the holy companions of Medina, welcomed the Muhajir, the holy companions who had migrated from Mecca with open arms. They were ready to make all sorts of sacrifices to support and assist them. Our pious predecessors made a pledge to do good to Muslims. As Sayyidina Jareed ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu recounts, I pledged allegiance to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa to testify that there is none worthy of worship but Allah Almighty and that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa is his messenger. I also pledged to establish salah, pay zakah, listen to and obey the appointed leader and do good to every Muslim. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Islamic teachings not only emphasize helping the oppressed, but also guiding the oppressor. According to a blessed hadith, you should assist both your oppressing and oppressed brother. If someone is an oppressor, you should help by stopping his wrongdoing. This is a form of support for him. If someone is oppressed, you should help them in his time of need. Dear viewers, we should always strive to do good for our Muslim brothers, no matter what the situation is, because this is their right upon us. The beloved Prophet ﷺ said, a believer has six key rights over another believer. Visit him when he is ill. Attend his funeral and prayer when he passes away. Accept his invitation. Greet him with salam when you meet. Pray for him when he sneezes and always do good to him, whether he is present or absent. From this blessed hadith, we learn that Muslims should actively do good to one another, avoid self-conceit and selfishness, and strive to fulfill each other's rights. This way we can spread goodness throughout our society and protect it from moral decay. Doing good to one another is a cornerstone of Islamic teachings. Our pious predecessors were so dedicated to this principle that they would endure personal suffering and feel deep sorrow for the hardship faced by others. For instance, when Sayyidina Ali ibn Fuzail's dinars were stolen during tawaf, his father saw him crying and asked, are you crying over dinars? He responded, I swear by the Lord, it's not the loss of dinars that moves me. I am grieving for the poor person on judgment day. He will have no excuse if he is questioned about this. Even today, promoting well-wishing in our society could help eliminate many problems such as violence, theft, deceit, jealousy, and malice. Dear viewers, to reform society and eradicate evil, we must actively do good to others. Doing good includes guiding people to beneficial actions, concealing their flaws, helping them overcome their weaknesses, and standing by them against their enemies. We should avoid deceit, jealousy, and disrespect. Instead, showing kindness to the young, respect to the elders, and protecting their rights and wealth. By addressing ignorance, and supporting those in need, we can foster a more just and compassionate community. I wish these noble ideals of well-wishing would become widespread among us and that everyone would embody them. If a businessman acts with integrity in his dealings, a factory owner ensures the quality of his products, a teacher cares for his students, a father supports his family, a husband 
shows kindness to his wife. A student respects his madrasa or jamia, and a doctor is compassionate towards his patients. Our world would become a haven of peace. No one would be harmed, and everyone could live their life with happiness. Dear viewers, in the Holy Quran and Hadith, well wishing is greatly emphasized. The Holy Quran is a guide for doing good to others. Allah Almighty began the first revelation with the word Iqra, read, and called people to knowledge and goodness, saying, O oh mankind, read so that you may attain goodness in this world and the hereafter. Islam at its core is the embodiment of well wishing. It is stated in a blessed hadith, Ad-Deenun Nasiha, meaning the religion is sincerity. If we reflect on this, we can see that well wishing is deeply embedded in the practices of Islam. For instance, the Shahada frees people from the worship of false gods. Salah demonstrates the equality and unity of all individuals. Fasting fosters empathy and compassion for the poor. The system of zakah aims to eradicate poverty. Hajj brings Muslims together as one united ummah. Justice ensures that the deserving receive their rights. Islam has established a remarkable system of well-wishing. Those who once engaged in violence, plunder and robbery during the age of ignorance were transformed by the peaceful society Islam created. Islam liberated people from the bondage of other people and taught them to respect one another. In a society where daughters were once buried alive, Islam declared daughters to be a blessing and secured their rights. It eradicated the system of usury and strictly prohibited the oppression, buying and selling of women. Instead of promoting revenge, Islam taught kindness and forgiveness. Moreover, Islam extends its well-wishing even to animals. For example, when a camel complained to the Holy Prophet wasallam, he called its owner and instructed him to ensure the camel was properly fed. In fact, Islam is a religion of well-wishing. Where there is Islam, there is safety, goodness, and justice. Dear viewers, we should draw inspiration from Islamic teachings and the example of our pious predecessors to guide our actions toward helping and supporting fellow Muslims. There are many ways to show kindness to the Muslim Ummah, such as addressing and resolving the problems they face. The beloved Prophet ﷺ said, The person who alleviates a Muslim's suffering, Allah Almighty will alleviate his suffering from the sufferings on the Day of Judgment. One way to practice well-wishing is by calling people to righteousness and forbidding evil. Sayyidina Kabul Ahbar anhu said, Jannatul Firdaus is specially adorned for those who enjoin good and forbid evil. Dear viewers, another form of well-wishing is to help poor Muslims. In a blessed hadith, it is said that a person who helps a Muslim and fulfills his needs is considered one who worships Allah Almighty throughout his life. Helping an oppressed person is also an act of well-wishing. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said, The one who relieves a distressed Muslim or helps an oppressed person, Allah Almighty will record 73 times forgiveness for him. Being soft with a debtor is another form of well-wishing. If the debtor is poor, granting him more time or forgiving the debt entirely is an act of kindness. Allah Almighty will protect such a person from the heat of hell. Offering condolences to a grieving family after the loss of a loved one is also an act of well-wishing. The beloved Prophet ﷺ said, whoever offers condolences to a grieving person, Allah Almighty will clothe him in the garment of taqwa and show mercy to his soul. And whoever comforts a person in distress, Allah Almighty will dress him 
in two garments of paradise whose value surpasses the entire world. Dear viewers, our society and lifestyle have strayed far from Islamic teachings, becoming increasingly disconnected. Apathy is becoming more common today. We often eat until we're full, but don't even consider our hungry neighbor. While dear children may yearn for bread, we tend to overspend on our own children. If we truly care about the welfare of others, we need to change our way of life. Just as the holy companions of the holy prophet ﷺ were always ready to sacrifice their lives and wealth for their Muslim brothers, it is crucial today to follow Islamic teachings. We should strive to better ourselves and cultivate the attribute of well-wishing. Living solely for ourselves is easy, but why not live for others? If our well-wishing can solve someone's problem, ease someone's grief, satisfy someone's hunger, protect someone's dignity, improve the lives of someone's children, or help someone earn a living, it is a great honor. Therefore, we should aim to live in a way that not only brings us happiness, but also contributes to the happiness of others. May Allah Almighty grant us the ability to do good to our fellow Muslims. Dear viewers, in today's episode, we explored the concept of well-wishing. We covered its significance, the passion our pious predecessors had for it, and the ways Islam promotes the welfare of people. We also examined the various forms of well-wishing. May Allah Almighty accept our endeavors. Insha'Allah, we will be back in the next episode with a new topic. Keep watching Madani Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Through Quranic insight we gain wisdom's light. Through Quranic insight we gain wisdom's light. Illuminating our path to what is right. Illuminating our path to what is right.